Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now we will start another paper 5090 O level June 23 question paper 22 and this is the second video which will be made up of the question 5, 6 and 7. So question 5, 6 and question 7 will be answered in this video. So starting with question number 5, figure 5.1 is a photomicrograph at the center of a plant root. Now it says, look at the diagram, we have something L, then we have J, and then we have K. So it says, what is J and K? So J is the phloem. And K is the xylem. State the term used to describe the group of tissues labeled L. So this labeled L is this part. And this is the bracket of this whole thing. So this is called a vascular bundle. Vascular bundle. Now it says state two ways in which the structure of a cell in tissue K will differ from a cell in tissue J. Now K is the xylem and J is the phloem. So K the xylem has a thick wall, phloem has a thin wall. Uh, in the xylem it is lignified, it is no, no lignin. Then in the xylem there is no cell contents. In the phloem there are cell contents. Then in the, vas in the xylem there are no end walls. In the phloem there are sieve plates. And then in the phloem there are companion cells and there are no companion cells. So you could do a line like that in the middle and right. But you only have to give me <coughs> two points. But I have about one, two, three, four, five points. So xylem thick wall, phloem thin wall, lignin in xylem, no lignin in phloem, no cell contents in xylem, cell contents present in xylem and there's peripheral cytoplasm as well, no end wall, sieve plates present, no companion cells, companion cells present. Then part 4, outline the function of tissue J. So what was tissue J was the phloem. So basically it says what is the function of the phloem. And this is a please remember four marks and they've given you quite a few lines to do that. But basically it's not very difficult. Uh, you have to give me the name of the process which is called translocation. Then what does uh, the phloem do? It transports sucrose. It transports amino acids from the source to the sink. And it's bi-directional flow because in some situations, in some phloem sieve tubes is going up and in others it is going down. Not in the same one, but in others they are going down because uh, if there is a leaf, and there is a white flower above the leaf then from that leaf it's going up into the white flower and then from that same leaf it could be in another sieve tube going down into the roots because the roots are a sink and the leaf is the source so you please need to revise this from uh, the video which i have on this chapter so that you get it very clear and you can write it correctly so the wordings of it is translocation gets you one mark then transport sucrose and amino acids will get you two marks then from source to sink will get you another mark and bi-directional flow will get you another mark. Then coming to B part 1, name the type of response shown by a plant root where it grows down into the soil after the seed has germinated. What is that called? That is called gravitropism. And it is positively gravitropism so if you said uh, gravitropism and positive gravitropism or you could have said positive gravitropism in the beginning so there's one mark for gravitropism and the other mark is for positive uh, the word positive being used so this was two marks so positive gravitropism would get you the two marks then it says explain the response explain how this response shown by the plant root is necessary for the leaves to grow and to appear green. Why is it important that the roots grow down? And then of course it results in the leaf. Now say so basically the roots have to absorb water, then they absorb ions, then the water results in cell elongation, and then of course the water is needed for photosynthesis, and then the magnesium from the soil is transported upwards in the leaf where it is used to make chlorophyll, and the nitrates from the soil are used to make amino acids and the amino acids are joined together to form proteins. See, when you look at the question, it says, explain how this response shown by the plant root is necessary for the leaves to grow and to appear green. 
So grow, you need photosynthesis, glucose. Glucose is a respire to release energy. And the magnesium, to appear green is magnesium. Magnesium is needed for the chlorophyll molecule. And the nitrates are needed for the amino acids and the protein. So you have to give me how the root growing into the soil is going to help the leaves to develop. Because you see when new cells are added, the glucose can be converted to cellulose. But where the protein is coming from? Proteins can't be made. The glucose contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. But the nitrates from the soil are needed to make an amino acid. And then the amino acids are put together to make proteins. So please understand this. Don't just uh, memorize it or just ratify it. So basically the roots will absorb water and ions. The water will help in cell elongation or the water is needed for photosynthesis. Then the magnesium from the soil is needed for the chlorophyll. And the nitrates from the soil are needed for the amino acids which are then put together to make proteins. Now coming to question number 6, figure 6.1 shows the pattern of results from an investigation into the effect of increasing light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. So rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis, light intensity in arbitrary units is on the x-axis. Now it says describe and explain the results between light intensity of 20 and 30 arbitrary units. So this point it is all constant. The rate has become constant. Describe and explain. So it's a constant rate and light is not the limiting factor. Describe and explain. So the rate has become constant and so it means whatever is in the x-axis is not the limiting factor anymore. Right is, light is not the limiting factor anymore. So describe and explain the pattern. There is only two marks. So for two marks you have to give constant rate and the fact that light is not a limiting factor. And actually it's not asked, but some other factor is limiting, which could be temperature or carbon dioxide concentration. Constant rate and the fact that light is not a limiting factor. Then it says the investigation was repeated with an increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Draw a curve on figure 6.1 to show the pattern of results that would be expected from this second investigation. And this is for two marks. And then it says state the name of the product of photosynthesis that contains carbon atoms. Now that was very simple, it was glucose. It's underlined so you couldn't have used any other word, you have to say glucose. Now we will complete the curve on figure 6.1 to show the pattern of results that would be expected from the second investigation. The second investigation was repeated with an increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So draw a curve on figure 6.1 show pattern that would be expected from the second investigation. Now this is the sort of curve that you would give it. It has to be from 0, 0.0, line ingredient is same up to at least light intensity 5. And then you see it ends at a light intensity of 30 and levels out higher after light intensity 19. So it should be a little higher at 19 and uh, after light intensity 19. So, I mean, you could make it a little different. So, this is the sort of graph you could get. Anything which is a little higher than it and then levels off by 30. And levels out higher and after light intensity 19. So, this is roughly how the graph was going to be like. Outline the uses made by a plant of named carbohydrates. So, what are the uses of the glucose which you've just answered earlier? Glucose is used for respiration. Uh, releases energy or you can see uh, produces ATP then starch stored as starch then glucose is used to make amino acids and amino acids are then assembled together to make proteins and then uh, the glucose can be converted to uh, cellulose cell walls and it is converted to sucrose for transport. So glucose used in respiration, respiration releases energy or respiration can produce ATP and then starch is stored and glucose is used to make amino acids uh, which are then converted into proteins or you can be used to make lipids. So when you put a slash you could have used any of these words. Cellulose cell walls and sucrose is used in transport. Question number seven, DNA carry genetic information in the form of genes. The paragraph below describes the structure of a DNA molecule. Complete the paragraph by writing the most appropriate word or letter in each space. DNA contains the chemicals carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus. 
two strands of DNA coiled together to form a double helix, H-E-L-I-X. Uh, each strand is made up of a chain of nucleotides. Bonds, pair, bonds between pairs of bases hold the strands together. These bases always pair up in the same way, T with A and G with C. So, uh, DNA contains the chemical elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and phosphorus. Two strands of DNA coil together to form a double helix. Each strand is made up of a chain of nucleotides. Bonds between pairs of bases hold the strands together. These bases always pair up in the same way T with A and G with C. Explain how genetic modification can be used to change the function of an enzyme so that it acts on a different substrate. Now, what is genetic modification? And it says, how can genetic modification be used to change the function of an enzyme? Now, everybody knows that enzymes have an active site. Now, if I can change that active site, now a different substrate will fit into it. So, basically, genetic modification is a change in the genetic material. Okay, so what are they? What are enzymes? Enzymes are proteins. And the genetic information which codes for a protein is in the DNA. So if we change the sequence of bases, this will change the sequence of amino acids and this will shape the, which this will change the shape of the active site of the enzyme. So this enzyme will, maybe we can take this and then of course modify it and it results in this enzyme with this different active site. And this active site will be complementary to a new substrate. Now in this old enzyme, this is the substrate. But in this enzyme, this is the substrate, it has a totally different shape. So you find how genetic modification will, it says, function of, is used to change the function of an enzyme so that it acts on a different substrate. So you have to just change the active site. You just can't, you just can't say change the shape of the enzyme. I'm not going to give you any marks for that. It's absolute BS. How can you write something that another substrate will fit? If the shape remains the same, then this substrate will fit. But if the shape changes, then this substrate will fit. So genetic modification is a change in the genetic material. Enzymes are proteins. Gene codes for a protein. Or you can say this gene codes for this specific enzyme. You can't just say enzymes because enzymes is a very broad category. There are many, 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 and then thousands and thousands of different enzymes. Protease is a different enzyme, lipase is a different enzyme, different active site, shape of the active site is different, different substrate fit in it. Now, change in the sequence of bases because DNA is made of bases. So if the change has to be, the change has to be in the sequence of bases, this results in a change in the sequence of amino acids. And this will cause a different type of folding. So this will change the shape of the active site. And uh, if you said this changes the shape of the enzyme molecule, even that would be fine, but specifically it is the active site. So there's a special mark for active site. And then this active site would be complementary shape to the new substrate. So the fact that it acts on a different substrate was in the question. So we needed to understand that.